Yeah, it's okay. 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 So, yeah. So we are basically discussing Drosophila as an alternate model. Now, what I would like to specially focus on the students here. You see, when you are joining any lab, you have two things. You have the supervisor or the guide of the lab who is working on a particular subject, and then he tends to give you a topic, and you have to create a balance. You have to create a balance about how exactly his lab is working on it, how exactly you would uh, infuse your own uh, understanding and things in the PhD program. At the same time, the guide expects all the time that what innovations, what new things that you will be introducing into the existing lab so that uh, there is a two-way communication that you learn what you have been joined as a lab as a student and what you give to your lab as an expertise when you leave so that your legacy also remains in the lab. So what I'm trying to take is a very small example. Like, let's see if uh, as a guide, I give my student a topic, let's say an Alzheimer's disease topic and why this should be relevant to me because uh, am I audible and the screen is moving just to check? Yes, Dr. Yes, sir. everything is okay. Okay. Okay, so now why I'm talking about AD? Because AD is important because all the funding agencies today in an Indian scenario, whether it is ICMR, whether it is CBT, whether it is DST, uh, the ICMR calls for the SRFs are open and the last date is 17th of December. So the first thing that will come to your mind is what are the areas that are being funded? So let's see, I'm curious about AD because worldwide so many people are uh, getting affected by that and as our life expectancy is going on, Parkinson and Alzheimer's, one a motor related disease and one a memory related disease. Uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson both are creating a huge issues. And in our country, it's a hidden problem because the kind of work pressure starting from school children to college education to uh, the kind of thing that you are getting to do in your job, it puts a lot of stress and stress would directly affect your cognitive function. So let's say we decide to write a project of work on Alzheimer's disease. And there are two things in Alzheimer's. One is your uh, amyloid beta and your uh, microtubule binding protein tau. So these are the two players that will be there in AD that we have to look upon. So basically, when you look upon the, uh, the Alzheimer's disease, you would also focus on several factors that are associated in its etiology and pathophysiology. So when you do that, then you would like to get some drugs or some targeting agents or newly synthesized molecules that will cater for one or more of these uh, pathways uh, in your AD. So uh, what happens is that you need to find a target. So in AD, particularly my lab, it is working on mitochondria and mitochondria, we know it's the powerhouse of the cell. And we know that uh, usually the apoptosis in the necrosis cascade happens through mitochondria and a lot of connections have been made between AD and mitochondria. And sp specifically within mitochondria, we target the inner mitochondrial uh, membrane bound mitochondrial permeability transition port, the PTP. And this PTP is a very valuable target for us because opening of the PTP leads to release of the cytochrome C that would in turn uh, take care of the uh, apoptotic cascades. So somehow if we can um, blunt the PTP with some blockade, with some drug candidate, that would be really great. So obviously different models of AD are available. And the first choice we think about is, okay, let's go with a rat. Why? Because mammalian data will give us a lot of uh, insight and we will get a very good publication because we are somehow blinded by this side that if you do experiments on a rat and it will be more closer to the humans and that would give you a very good alternate of your medication discovery related to human beings. So what we have is that's not the real truth. The truth is lot many, lot many people are working not only on rat, but on the alternate models of C. elegans, drosophila and zebrafish. And one of my seniors, Professor Amin Nazir, who is a principal scientist at CDRI, he will be uh, showing you or showcasing you the C. elegans uh, um, 
tomorrow uh, in his workshop so then what happens is you would then get so many models of ads which you can see this is a rat model where you have a chemical induced a metal induced or a lipid induced or an aging induced so all of these will be uh, important for you because you are thinking that with this external agents you are able to induce ad so usually what we do is we infuse uh, a beta amyloid a known quantity of 4 microgram icv that is intra cerebro ventricularly within the hemisphere of the brain on one side of the hemisphere and then we say okay this is done and the beta amyloid plaques are within the brain and the alzheimer's disease has been induced now there is a catch technically when you do something like that you are actually only studying a beta amyloid induced neurotoxicity at best you can claim it is do producing a model a rodent model which is exhibiting alzheimer disease like symptoms there is no way that you can say that 10 rats have been used and all of those 10 rats when infused with the beta amyloid they are replicating the uh, alzheimer's disease they are only showing you certain symptoms which are maybe like alzheimer's as the beta amyloid neurotoxicity is known to cause that now this is a problem because technically it's not an alzheimer's disease model and we can claim we cannot claim that and we never claim that usually in papers we say like that so is there a way out because you have the morris water maze that will tell you that the rat is forgetting then you have the membrane potential that will tell you okay the membrane integrity is compromised that is why the apoptosis will take place you have the cytochrome c release that is the first indicator that the membrane integrity has been breached the cytochrome c has been released so there is more of cytosol lick fraction cytochrome c which you can see on the right hand side and in the mitochondria because of beta amyloid you can see that the cytochrome c is less in the mitochondrial fraction because most of it has leached out in the cytoplasmic fraction so these evidences are fine so why then we should use drosophila because this is a beautiful model drosophila is giving you a transgenic model with ad so what happened is i will share with you when i do a docking study the animal ethics committee is not convinced when i do a beta amyloid induced neurotoxicity in a cell line still the animal ethics committee is not very impressed but when i tell them that out of 10 docking candidates i took four in cell culture out of those four in cell culture i did three in drosophila and within my drosophila model out of three i would now like to propose this one candidate which showed really very nice results in transgenic strain in my alzheimers then the animal ethics committee is very convinced about this fact and they then uh, approve the animals in the animal study so it's helps me in both ways first of all it gives me a transgenic model it's not easy to work on transgenic animals uh, the mice so the transgenic model gives me the avenue to even shortlist my candidates at one another level we are shortlisting them at docking level at cellular level cell culture level but drosophila gives me way more things so uh, just after i present very briefly one of my Prost docs, uh, Dr. Swati, who is uh, leading the uh, Drosophila lab uh, in my group, she has actually done her PhD from IITR in Lucknow, and she has worked under Dr. Dikar Chaudhary. If there are like top five people working on Drosophila model in our country, Dr. Dikar Chaudhary is one of them. So she will be explaining about how Drosophila is and how its lifespan is there. and how exactly we can use it as a model for studying and we will try with the different cameras that we have in the mobile phones that to show you how exactly it is being done so drosophila the best thing is it has a very very short life cycle just 10 days so you have ample opportunity to study them 
you get more flies at one count so the n also increases in rat if you do surgery there is survival issue and then there is another issue where you have to check in the mosses water means whether the alzheimer induced um, rats they uh, could actually uh, function or not and then there are several approaches uh, for the, the drosophila for example in compound screening and as i said that the compounds can be screened with this drosophila model and finally the validation can be in the mammalian model so drosophila is an excellent uh, screening model uh, and this whole gene expression thing with the gal4 that uh, dr swati will be explaining to you when she will take over from me because this is the most important slide of the presentation that how exactly we do it and we will see if we can show you like how exactly we see it in the microscope because this uh, particular uh, infusion on uh, this particular uh, change happens in the eye so what we can do is we can check every fly for the eye modification and we can say okay we have only selected those transgenic flies that have this particular uh, character in their eye so dr swati will be explaining it and um, i and this she will also show you the two different strains and how we cross them and how exactly a drosophila brain looks like and she will also demonstrate few of the assays that we are doing a longevity assay or the climbing assay which is kind of the neuro behavioral assay of drosophilas and um, i will just skip to the part where i can yeah so this is important when you compare both the animal studies as well as the as the flies you can see that the results that we are showing is of climbing assay jumping assay and person survival these are the major neuro behavioral assays even on an alzheimer disease model of drosophila so what dr swati would demonstrate is how exactly we can do these assays and how you can correlate them with the behavior of drosophila in a transgenic model of alzheimer's disease so uh, we can also do uh, the um, enzyme assays we can also do the membrane potential experiments and the ros activities with flow cytometer this is all with drosophila brain we can also do uh, cell lysate and run western blots with it and uh, this all helps us in the whole mechanistic uh, issue of drosophila so uh, i would like to acknowledge here uh, the drosophila group which is led by dr swati and one of uh, uh, the other members of the lab dr uh, miss saba afshin she is a phd student uh, with us in the project and uh, both of them will be uh, talking to you showing you how the media is made showing you the different things that we need and the best part about drosophila uh, group is you can only use two particular things an incubator where you keep the drosophila line and the microscope where you do the work and the dissecting kind of a microscope rest all the things any normal facility that you have you should have a autoclave which usually a lab has you should have a western blot assembly the lysates can be taken from the drosophila and done it you should have a flow cytometer any other thing can be used from a normal facility you only need a nice bod incubator which maintains the time uh, because you need some cycles also the temperature and a nice microscope so uh, i think you will have a lot of questions also to dr swati when she demonstrates you this was important for me to tell you like what exactly do we get to achieve from drosophila so i am just showed you one example about how a transgenic drosophila fly line of alzheimers can be used in the same parameters that you are doing in animals and then uh, dr swati will explain and show you i don't know how the camera will work and how Uh, we can take it forward but uh, let's give it a try okay so uh, over to dr swati can you please uh good afternoon to everybody i am dr swati i am working as a icmr ra uh, uh, in the lab 
and i'm showing the draw i'm going to show how draw, we work on drosophila with my colleague uh, sabab shi so uh, drosophila melanogaster is already sir told you uh, is a, a wonderful alternative animal model uh, working on various aspects of development biology and ecology related biology uh, so basically drosophila is an insect that uh, belong to the phylum orthopoda and the genus name drosophila species in melanogaster it has a uh, uh, four pair of chromosome and a uh, 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 very particular uh, <coughs> and a very uh, specific thing is have a very short cycle and uh, uh, the female lays a number of uh, uh, 100 more than 100 400 number of eggs which are we easily uh, maintain in the lab so uh, how i maintain Uh, am I visible to everybody? Uh, hello, I'm visible. Visible to everybody? Yes, you are visible, but uh, oh, the you. culture system is not that much visible. Okay, I'm just showing the wire uh, where we uh, uh, maintaining to the sophila la sophila uh, flies. Uh, this is kind uh, of food, food, food vial we are using for maintaining the drosophila. Okay, fine. So, uh, uh, as we concern over the physiology, uh, 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 external features of drosophila, uh, it has a three, two pairs of uh, one pair of wings, three pairs of legs, and have a segmented abdomen. So the male and female fly easily uh, distinguish uh, by the abdominal segment uh, fusion. So okay, thanks. Uh, so the fly, uh, the male fly is uh, generally smaller than the female fly. And uh, uh, it has a fused abdomen, uh, fused abdominal segment, and uh, have a, a one pair of sex comb. That's how we distinguish the male and female flies during the mating process. Uh, I just want to show you the life cycle of uh, how the life cycle of Drosophila works. So this is how the fly look like. Uh, it has a, uh, uh, this is the adult, adult fly which is showing here. This is the fly, the first stage of life cycle of fly is the fly egg. This is how the egg show. The main, the main part uh, is that the fly lays a nest, uh, has the large number of progeny which we easily be maintained and easily be used for the experimental purpose. Uh, after the egg, is, uh, egg after the larval uh, egg stage, the flies are converted into first star larva. This is how the larva are uh, uh, show in the fly, in the life cycle of flies. Uh, there are the three stages of uh, three stages of uh, larval stage: a uh, first in star, second in star, and third in star. Uh, if, if the temperature is appropriate around 24 to 25 degree and uh, experiment conditions are optimal, the uh, first in star and second uh, first in star larvae are uh, converted into second star within the 24 hour and then 24 in the 20, 24 hour in the third in star larva. So uh, the, uh, the, star, the first and second in star and third in star larva are feeding the food and, and grow into the Pupil stage. This is how the lava look like. This is the mouth part. 
which is how used for the since in feeding this is how the uh, uh, larvae uh, crawl and uh, their mechanism is work then how they feed the food and their uh, body is uh, designed just to uh, feed extensively to uh, to develop in the ne next stage so this is the early pupal stage when the flight from turn start to convert into a uh, early pupal stage where he stop feeding and uh, settled on the wall of the uh, culture flight culture while so this is how the adult fly look like i just want to show you the pupal stage you can to share on this stage sorry screen pe nahi aa rahi I just give me a minute sorry for the interruption please wait share kar le mujhe कैमरा जूम कर लो प्लीज uh this is how the pupil uh, uh the pupil uh, the screen is visible to everyone blank screen right now uh i'm showing the pupil stage of fly no it's not visible okay Uh, is the uh, screen visible? I think there is a second screen. If you wanted to project that, I think. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's uh. It's... I'm actually connecting the my uh, laptop with the microscope and uh, showing you the pupil stage of the lab, uh, the fly. Yeah, it's, it's visible, visible in some other screen. Yes, it's it's shown there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, this is how the pupa uh, uh, look like of the fly. Uh, it is under the my I am showing is under the microscope by connecting with the uh, laptop. So uh, in this pupil uh, in the pupil stage we can see uh, the fly wing and the top of that the eyes and uh, at the pupil stage we generally uh, check the uh, uh, sex comb of the male fly. uh there are the uh, they uh, it's not uh, very clear in this picture but uh, when we see under the microscope we have the uh, of a little uh, it look like a little dot uh, in the uh, leg four leg region of the male fly this is how we distinguish the male and female pupa 
at the early stage and uh, for the setting of the process we collect seed pupa uh, as a virgin fly for the uh, mating study uh, this is uh, this is the female and the male fly and uh, uh, this is how, how we distinguish the fly so uh, flies generally maintain in the uh, in beauty incubator we maintain the optimal temperature 24 to 25 degree and uh, humidity and uh, day night uh, 6 hour uh, uh, timer this is uh, to maintain their circadian rhythm uh, So, uh, uh, how we make, uh, how we maintain, uh, how to make the uh, the uh, uh, flies transgenic uh, flies to uh, uh, study our gene of interest. So in uh, in Drosophila, we're using a US uh, GALPO system, a upstream activating sequence. It's for is the stand for UAS and the GALPO galactose 4. It's generally used in the East. And uh, this work in the Drosophila, we um, uh, creating a transgenic line uh, which having a particular gene in the uh, in the particular gene attached with the upstream activating sequence in the free element and this element is inserted in the embryonic in the embryonic stage of the drosophila by uh, micro injection and then the, these flies grow to uh, de develop as a uh, fly line for the particular gene so we have a, a in driver line with driver line basically are the lines which are uh, specific for the tissue like uh, eye tissue, eye, uh, eye region, uh, mid gut tissue, and yeah, uh, specifically a particular neuron. Uh, these are the uh, these tribal signs are specific for the particular region of the fly. And the US the gene attached with the US line uh, is the lean of interest which we are going to we want to study. So. Uh, to uh, assess the what are the lines we are uh, developing and how we identify these lines, we have a certain type of physical phenotypes like color of the eye, uh, color of the body, color of the eye, and the wing physiology like curly wings, red wings, and vestige. We have some flies. We have vestigial wings and the bristles over the uh, their body. So, uh, uh, if I have uh, want to develop a fly uh, which has with the uh, disease like feature of Alzheimer's disease. So, Alzheimer's disease with uh, the A beta 42 protein is the basically the key player in the Alzheimer's disease pathophysiology. So, there are the lines which are available, already available, transient lines are available that will over express the uh, A beta 42 protein. When we made the uh, when we uh, do the genetic study on the fly, so there are the uh, UAS lines, uh, UAS A beta 42 lines, which we are which we are using. So uh, if I have the over express A beta 42 protein, and how I physically identify this protein is uh, uh, is expressed in the progeny. So uh, for the physical uh, identification, I'm using a eye specific galpo, which is specifically uh, overexpress this protein in the eye region of the fly. So we have a uh, um, driver line, galpo line uh, named GMR galpo line, which expresses the particular uh, uh, our uh, gene of interest in the eye region. So I am crossing. Uh, so I I will cross the fly of uh, GMR GAL4 with the US E beta 42 fly. When the progeny come, we have the degenerated eye, eye of the progeny. 
this is how it looks is the GMR gal force uh, fly I which is uh, totally fine and the US A beta 42 fly which is totally uh, healthy and fine. When we cross the both flies, uh, we have the degenerated uh, eye, eye unit like uh, the drosophila in eye is the is in set I with the uh, with this having the hundreds of omitted unit. It's a compound eye. It's not like the human eye, but it's a, a compound eye with the dip, uh, with the hundreds of omitted unit uh, structures. Uh, when the, we express this protein, the, these are uh, these structures are reduced in size, uh, lost their color, and degenerate. Degenerate. So this is how we uh, assume that our line is working and uh, our protein is uh, affecting the progeny. So uh, this is how we physically identify. But uh, how we, uh, if uh, I want to express in the whole, whole body and in the, specifically in the brain, I'm using elast gel four line. So this is how we will work in the lab. Uh, we're crossing the fly with elast gel four uh, with US A beta 42 fly. And uh, the progeny fly is having the a over expression of A beta 42, which is which we identified by the Western plotting of A beta 42. And for the uh, assuming the AD model speech, uh, we, uh, we assuming the and identify the uh, symptomic uh, sim uh, features of Alzheimer's disease, we perform some behavior essays like some climbing essays, jumping essays, survival, and learning and memory test over the fly. Uh, so the fly is having the lot of progeny. So we are ac uh, accessing 200 to 400 flies for these experiments. These are the driver, uh, I'm going to show you. These are the driver lines, which are generally work in the neurobiology, like uh, APEL gal 4 GMR gal 4 the specific I already tell you for the eye. Uh, for the neurons is elav gal 4 and char gal 4 and these are the model fly which are used for, for the uh, development of AD uh, models like APP, US, DAS, C1, A beta 42, wild and architect. So, uh, just as telling you, uh, the behavior assay, when, the, uh, when we induce the uh, overexpression of A beta 42, the physiology of fly has changed and uh, uh, they uh, generally slow down and uh, they have some, they showing in the behavior in the climbing and jumping, their normal physiology. So, this is a 10 second video. When we uh, fly, tap the fly, the, the, uh, the way that the fly moving upward is changed uh, is compared to different. I'm going to show you uh, how it's actually works. Uh, Okay, uh, we have two or two. Hello. Uh, which have? Hello. One thing you can do, you can sir? stop the sharing and uh, you can stop sharing and uh, then the other window will come to the main, as a main screen. Okay. Is it visible, sir? Yeah, the, 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 yeah, now it's visible. Okay. So uh, for the uh, generally for the climbing assay, we use our two uh, two tubes, uh, and uh, uh, we marking the tube with ten centimeter marks. So uh, we just tapping the fly uh, from the bottom of the tube. Uh, when we free the fly, they jump, they climb to the upward. Uh, as we compare the
uh, the fly with the wild type is uh, is rapidly going upward within the 10 second while the deceased fly is not able to go within the 10 second to the upward direction so i'm going to show you how it is work this is how we tap the fly From this side of fly, they are going rapidly. It's already on the top. This is just for the demonstration. We generally uh, taking the number of flies, like five flies or ten flies. Uh, just for the demonstration, there are uh, uh, many number of flies. This is how the flies move to the upward and the time they are taken we compare in the control and the uh, disease fly and assume how the fly uh, uh, affected by the protein overexpression and uh, their physiology change due to their due to this. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, as I already explained, this is the food wires we are using for the maintenance of culture. So, for the transfer of uh, uh, someone, uh, assume how we transfer the fly from one wires to other wires. So, uh, flies are generally, uh, when we tap the wire like this, they all, all come on the bottom of the uh, culture wire. So, we just pull out the plug. Tap the flies and transfer it to the other wire by just tapping. So how this is uh, we are this is how we maintaining the culture by transferring in the fresh wires within the one week in the every cycle. Uh, this is the anesthetized wire. Uh, uh, Sri, it will not be possible to bring it to full screen. Okay. The demonstration portion, if it comes to the full screen, the viewers will be able to better appreciate it. Sir, uh, sir, we can do it on our own. People who are doing it on the computer, uh, okay. they can actually drag the screen and bring it in the front and they can zoom it out. Right now, I'm doing the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the flies we are already in size. Yeah, you're getting it. I am getting it. Okay. So that can be told to all participants, right? Rohit, please instruct all participants to do this. Uh, so what you can do, you can actually uh, drag the demonstration screen in the middle. So you will get a zoom view. Okay. So two screens are there side by side. You are seeing Dr. Yes. Uh, to help Parvez's screen. And there is another screen in which the demonstration is going on. So you can drag both the screen right in the front. So it will be, uh, you will see a broader view. So clear picture will be visible. Uh, sir, uh, the uh, microscope screen is visible. Yes, both are visible. Yeah, not the microscope screen. Yeah, yeah. Now it is there. It's there. Okay, sir. So this is how the fly will show under the microscope. Uh, this is the eye part of the fly, and this is the female fly. Actually, we clearly show their abdominal uh, seven uh, abdominal segment. Uh, and in the male, female, in the male fly, generally these abdominals are fused. So this is how the fly will show.
taking down the flies. Is the larval stage is visible to everyone? No, it's not visible. No, no. You're not, not seeing the larva. We can see only you and another face. Okay. And of course, there is another screen where I could see the microscope, but not the larvae. Sir, can you visible now? Yes, it's visible now. You see it? That's not very clear though, but it's visible. I can see another screen. Yeah, it's uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. Beautiful. 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 Yes. It's coming. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah. This is third star larvae stage. It's actually very active stage. So he just moving here and there. This is how the lava look like. Uh, in the presentation, I am just telling you about the phenotype of the wing. Uh, this is the actually uh, we have having the sum of the flies are the balances uh, we having the uh, way they having the balancer chromosome. So uh, in the balancer chromosome, we attach the physical phenotypes. I've already tell you the physical phenotypes of wing like curly wings. Uh, these are the uh, actual the curly wings of the uh, flies. It have the black eye color. We have this flight like SP, uh, we do uh, represent as SP, uh, DCO2, TM6, PCYO. This is how we nomenclate the flight with balancer chromosome. Uh, can you see the curly wing of the fly? This is how this is shown. Uh, the curly wing of fly. Yes, yes, it's there. This is how the curly wing of fly. And this is the straight wing of fly. This is wild type fly, and the fly we earlier show is the uh, transgenic fly. This is uh, uh, straight wing fly, uh, wild type fly, and this the fly having the curly wing with having a balancer chromosome, which is transgenic fly. Uh, it is clear. Yes, it's clear. Okay, so the, how we differentiate the fly with the physical phenotype like the wing and the eye color. The eye color of this transgenic fly is also a white and the uh, uh, the wild type having the red eye. Uh, I think it's physical. Uh, you can see that the eye color. Is it visible? Yes, eye color is visible. Okay, so this is how we differentiate the transgenic and the wild type. We have it as this physical phenotype like eye color, red and white, uh, wing, uh, wing uh, phenotype like curly and the straight. This is how we differentiate the fly.
so uh, this is the uh, the straight wing fly is the male fly which i earlier show uh, right they have the huge abdominal segment so how we, this is uh, this is uh, the male fly which i uh, go, which are i am showing you Uh, I just want to show you how we dissect the uh, this is the short video actually we have microscope is not clear very visible this is uh is this video is visible to everyone yes yes dr Swat. yes yes yes, yes. yeah uh this is how we dissect out the brain in the drosophila fly By removing, first we remove, remove the head and the eye. These are the two known which are visible. This is exactly the braid of the fly. Uh, just I'm going to show you how we're making the sample of the fly for the uh, Western and uh, uh, transcriptomic studies. Uh, we're doing the uh, drosophila dissection in the previous uh, buffer, one next previous buffer.
Uh, this is uh, visible to everyone by dissecting part, dissection part. Yes, yes, it's visible. So basically, you have put it in a, in a culture dish. In a culture yes, dish, uh, you have taken some media, and uh, uh, you are saying PBS. Uh, in the in this dish, we're taking a PBS one X PBS buffer. Yes. And the flies which we act or uh, previously show you, and a size fly, we put this flies in this meat in this buffer solution. Yes, yes. And first, we remove their heads. The head part of the rostula. Generally, for the uh, protein study and the uh, transcriptomic study, we only need the head part of the uh, uh, fly. Uh, we generally homogenize these the, these head parts and uh, making a lysate with uh, uh, with lysing buffer. And uh, by uh, uh, centrifuge down the precipitate and the uh, uh, supernatant solution, the, we uh, Taking that supernatant solution for the sample as a sample for our uh, protein and uh, RNA studies. And for the macroscopic study, we uh, uh, dissect out the brain and uh, stain with different uh, 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 antibodies which tag with particular uh, particular fluorescence and uh, by uh, uh, Identifying uh, their staining, we uh, identify how the brain uh, regenerate or uh, change uh, due to the uh, overexpression of the particular protein like A beta 42, uh, which I, which the fly already have. We are expressing these protein. Uh, this is a little tricky because the uh, we have a pigment, red pigment in the eye part. This is how we removed. We get the brain. Ah, uh, we just it all the time. You can try one again, once again. Is my buffer to run?
is fine. That's right. Is it visible, the dissection part? Yes, it's kind of hazy, but it's visible. Uh, yeah, actually, we are doing under the microscope the mag yeah. uh, little problem with the magnification yeah. uh, doing the live dissection. दूसरी स्लाइड तो Uh, as you show, as you see in the clear view of fly. How we remove the head part? Uh, we are hardly managing the dissection. Uh, still, the pigmented part is attached, but we clearly seen the two lobes of the brain. Uh, this is how the we dissect the brain, and it look like. Uh, this is clear. Yes, it's very clear. Okay. So uh, this is all we are doing in the lab uh, with Drosophila and uh, uh, I am working actually I am working on the uh, neurotoxicity of the pesticides on the wild type uh, Drosophila and my work will proceed it to the uh, transgenic model of the uh, neurodegenerative disease. Uh, we are actually interested in the PD model 
and my colleagues above uh, working on the AD Alzheimer's disease model. So, uh, is Abby any anybody have questions? Can explain it. How many numbers of lies needed for the isolation part? At least, like uh, for the one sample, uh, we're taking around hundred brain, uh, fly brain, uh, for the experiment for the one sample. Okay. And we get the perfect protein. So, uh, in general, we using the crude protein part. So we just dissected out head and uh, uh, homogenize with the buffer and uh, taking the supernatant and the, that sample we are uh, using for the protein study. Yeah, and the, uh, just like for the mitochondrial uh, dysfunction study, uh, we need to dissect out the uh, around 100 around brains and uh, we uh, isolate the mitochondria uh, from the uh, uh, fly brain and then uh, uh, perform the experiment related to the oxidative stress, uh, MMP, microcontent membrane potential, uh, et cetera. In toxicological studies, how you are actually performing? Like uh, Toxicological study, uh, like uh, just I am using the pesticide, we uh, selecting uh, the particular doses of the pesticide, uh, generally on the literature view literature uh, studies and uh, and we also do the ld50 study on the fly by dosing with the particular uh, doses uh, in the food we generally mix the pesticide in the food either uh, either uh, either toxicant or drug is mixed in the food in the food of the fly uh, they are a particular concentration we measure the dose accordingly on the 5 ml food uh, on the culture wire in the culture vial and then we uh, incubate the fly with the in the in, the, in that culture wire for the 24 hour uh, for the toxic and 24 to 48 hour and the for the drug for the uh, for drug exposure we uh, incubate for the five days or seven days we alternately to change the uh, food uh, for the uh, for the fresh exposure uh, fresh food so the fly will getting all the uh, toxic and or drug in their meat or we have uh, we can get a perfect result of, of the exposure and, uh, the uh, the culture medium how you are actually preparing okay i want to show you focus uh, these are the contents uh, of the The culture media actually contain the mist flow uh, agar, uh, agar for the solidification of the food, the crows and the yeast. Okay. Uh, how much percentage you are actually uh, taking these? Uh, actually, this is, uh, is a standardized recipe for the uh, for the Drosophila food medium, which already been used. Uh, this is visible. This is visible actually on the other screen, I think. The food content. It's Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Ma uh, I'm a PhD student of uh, uh, Dr. Rohit said. Ma'am, may, may I know if we are, if we are, if we want to uh, analyze a mitochondrial study of yes. uh, a study in uh, Drosophila on which location uh, other than adipose adipose tissue of the flies we can uh, locate uh, adipose tissue uh, actually the adipose tissue or the fat bodies are uh, we can do these kind of studies on the larval stage I as I think uh, we can do the uh, larval stage so it's easily on the uh, because the larva, the larva stage has a uh, large number of the fat body or the adipose tissue, and as compared to the adult fly, so so we can do these uh, studies on the larvae. It can be easily be done. Is it any particular instar one two three? If we want to, or we can start from the one and uh, consequently go one two three and. 
uh, actually from the first star it is uh, not easily uh, op uh, feasible uh, on the third instar lava is actually in the big in the size and in the transition stage so we easily handle dissection part and other part on these stage so mm -hmm. i think third instar lava is good to study third instar okay. stage third instar okay ma'am ma'am um, yes, yes. Ma we, but but you have to isolate the single cell of mitochondria from the uh, dissecting part dissect, dissecting tissue and then you uh, incubate with the dye or what the what are the experimental proof protocol you have ma'am what are the dyes we can uh, use if you suggest uh, uh, for the uh, uh, ros study uh, oxidative stress study uh, yes uh, yes ma'am uh, for ros study we are using dhe uh, dye uh, we sorting the cells in the flow cytometry. Uh, we have the uh, just publication from this lab. Uh, they are using the DHE dye for the R ROS detection. They just incubate the dye in the uh, micro isolated mitochondria cells, and then they sorted the cell in the flow cytometer. So uh, the uh, the number of cells which are uh, uh, dyed by the DHE, we uh, have the uh, highest content of oxidative states of free radicals. So this is how they assume that they uh, have mitochondrial uh, effects uh, have show the oxidative of uh, uh, ROS or reactive ox ox produce reactive ox oxidative species or affected by the uh, their uh, chemical exposure. Uh, thank you, Dr. Swati. I think uh, let's continue with the workshop. We'll we'll contact you separately. Get all the queries sorted out. And sure, maybe we sure, have to sure. collaborate. Then we can uh, we can send samples to you, and uh, we'll talk to Dr. Parvez also about it. Sure, sir. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, sir. So uh, we actually I'm showing the media content. Is it visible? visible hai. Uh, uh, screen pe visible hai. yes so uh, we generally have the maze base flow uh, uh, base flow and the sucrose agar for the solidification and the yeast so uh, there is a standardized uh, recipe uh, for the drosophila food medium which is used uh, we actually dissolve the agar in the 200 ml of uh, uh, distilled water and then uh, 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 dissolve uh, and already dissolve with 17 gram and uh, 7.5 gram sugar and maize in the 100 ml and then we mix in the uh, agar, um, uh, boiled agar uh, water and then uh, we cook them uh, perfectly. And uh, then dissolve the yeast, and and uh, uh, by uh, for the uh, uh, other antibacterial and uh, pesticide uh, and antibacterial and uh, preservative, we use the nepogen, uh, methyl uh, methyl paraben, and the propionic acid after the food is perfectly cooked. So it's actually a recipe of just like we making a food, not a uh, but uh, like. The, used in the uh, bacterial culture and other culture media. So the fly, uh, the vial of the uh, food media just look like this. This is how the food color after the solidification and the, uh, we maintaining the culture, this kind of glass vials and bottles like this. So the food need to be, uh, the, uh, the flies need to be transferred after every week into the new culture vials or bottles to uh, steadily maintain the uh, fly in the lab. Uh, any other uh, queries? Actually, I, I have the, all these things I already told. Uh, I, I want, just want to know uh, if ha anybody has the question accordingly. I, you talked about driver genes. And uh, yes. uh, you specifically mentioned about neurologically related uh, driver genes. 
and could you have a, where we can actually get uh, the there will be any specific um, site is there we can get more uh, driver genes for different type of organs uh yeah, we generally get the stocks with international stock center located in oregon bloomington stock, stock center and in india we procured the fly from the ncbs and they have uh, all, uh, stock cent uh, separate stocks drosophila stock center they maintaining the all kind of transgenic flies and uh, uh, all the kind of driver lines uh, we ha uh, drosophila al also have deficiency lines which have the deficiency of particular gene uh, RNAi lines with using RNA interference uh, process and micro RNA lines. Uh, I'm actually uh, doing, uh, I'm, uh, I have the PhD work in micro RNA. So uh, I'm using that uh, flies, uh, procured the flies from the other labs and all. And uh, some other labs are actually making their own flies, they not have that facility there. So all the stocks are procured from uh, outside the lab from the various stock centers like Bloomington and LCBS in India. And uh, the, uh, we we can get it from different lines from that NCBS, like whatever we purchasing cell lines. The similar way we can actually get it from them. Yeah, yeah, sir. We can purchase the lines, and some were some ones. Uh, actually, we are all the fly lines are all are gifted with uh, gifted by uh, some lab. So we purchasing by the paying the dollar bill, and uh, from the Bloomington, they all they uh, uh, charge with some uh, uh, shipment charge and uh, uh, per per stock uh, per while uh, dollar amount for the. Uh, for the fly, uh, transgenic, so uh, they have the, uh, different different charges. Uh, just like to uh, um, have a, a other stock center, fly, but in LCBS we easily uh, available flies are available just because we uh, take just shipped in the uh, normal uh, courier post and the flies will reach safely. Uh, this can, the, this time is actually perfect time for the transfer of the flies from the one place to another because the temperature is optimal, like 22, 23. So this is the table time for getting the flies from all over where you wherever you want. And the culturing, we need a specific facility, or we can actually use uh, the some place in our lab for culturing. No, sir. We are ha actually having a one microscope, like we showing the stereo zoom microscope, and uh, one uh, a beauty incubator, uh, which come in the different sizes. Uh, we have the one thousand liter beauty incubator. We uh, um, they, they, just for the maintaining of optimal temperature. We using the beauty incubator for the temperature maintain and humidity. So with that uh, temperature for the 24 or 25 degree and uh, flies will easily be maintained at that temperature in the BOD. Uh, and uh, we may also maintaining the lab temperature by using AC and other equipment. So the, the experimental conditions are optimal for every, uh, for every experiment. And uh, for the advanced study like immunostaining, uh, we can use the confocal microscope and fluorescence microscope as our fly is having a fluorescence marker and anything. So uh, we can have, uh, it is required for the drosophila lab, the fluorescence or and the confocal microscope. And uh, the imaging we can actually use uh, the entire fly or we can actually dissect the specific places and do that. How you are actually doing like GFP or RFP labeled flies. Uh, so we have get the flies, uh, transgenic lines, which already have the GFP fluorescence attached in it. Uh, we have, we uh, using like, just, just like we have the US A beta fly, we overexpress in the eye, uh, A beta 42 protein. Just like we have a line, we US GFP. So we overexpress the GFP protein in the particular tissue by using the driver line. So when we cross the fly, the GFP protein will be induced in the particular tissue like gut or eye. So when we see under the uh, microscope, we differentiate what the GFP, what the progeny have GFP and non-GFP. And uh, for the fluorescence, we use the uh, different uh, dyes like DAPI, 
it is an orange propodium iodide for the uh, staining particular staining of the tissue uh, we so we clearly see what happened inside the cell so they uh, they need to be high end microscopy like on focal so we can easily use or fluorescence uh, filter my uh, microscope containing fluorescence filter so we easily differentiate what the our tissue will show about the uh, the uh, uh, that depends upon your experiment dr swati i have one question uh, in order to get this transgenic flies or to work in the lab with the transgenic models uh, do we have to have an institutional biosafety committee uh sir we don't uh, have any recommend uh, uh, bioethical or biosafety uh, bioethics committee is there but biosafety committee do we need to have because we are working on a transgenic uh, fly is if no. we have to get no sir we didn't get this kind of uh, certificate or approval we uh, actually this is not a biohazardous or a disease fly is only expressed when we genetically made so the the transgenic flies work as a normal fly with the it doesn't carry any uh, disease and they'll be made and uh, produce a progeny which actually uh, controlled in the lab in the virus and uh, when the experiment over it totally discarded and uh, uh, dead by uh, but it it actually dis we discard the all the experimental fly after the work is over so i don't know i don't think this as the any uh, hazard or biosafety uh, issues related to drosophila experiment okay okay thank you thank you do you have by any chance any uh, uh, flies which are like model for obesity or diabetes or something like that uh, sir some uh sir some groups are working on on um, uh, just my senior uh, yeah, when i am working on when i work on my phd in uh, indian institute of uh, toxicology research csr iitr one of the scientists dr raviram prishpati he is working on the diabetic model of the drosophila so okay. they use they use chemical induced diabetes in the drosophila and uh, comparing the uh, flies with feeding on the sugar medium just like i when uh, just uh, just like i show you the uh, fly media with the maize and uh, other things uh, they yeah. make uh, uh, preparing a media in the uh, in the agar media and uh, just uh, they are not uh, dissolving other things they only use sugar in the media sugar and agar so the fly only feed on the sugar not other things so they uh, this is how they have the sugar high sugar level in their body and uh, they may they maintaining that uh, fly as a control for the uh, diabetic uh, transgenic diabetic model and these they flies they don't stick this this no, this flies they don't get stick in the sugar sugar solution no sir, no, sir. they have the agar agar um, okay, okay, agar is solid sugar is solid. agar and the food is not like mushy solid food so okay. just they, these insects are natural suckers they oh, this is how they feed on the food so they all they easily feed this uh, media and uh, they have the sh high sugar level this uh, they only feed for the particular time like 10 hours 12 hours 24 hours with uh, depending on their experiment and they have already have transgenic line for the diabetes but the diabetes is a metabolic disease so they work on the metabolism and the enzymatic assay more of that So this is how they develop the diabetic model. Got it. Thank you so much. Any other question? Hello. Uh, yes, uh, Shwati, have you completed the instruction you want to give to the participants? Shwati, can you hear me? I think, sir, they are disconnected. 
uh, CJ is a fish taker. She should get connected to the participants. But okay. should have some, some questions to ask. Okay. Uh, I think they are trying to come back. Yes. There's some network issue, I think, there. Okay, no. Let them try. Hello, Swati. Uh, sir, actually, uh, the uh, this is some is network issue. Uh, am, am I am am I audible? Yes, yes. You are audible, but you are not coming to the screen. The screen uh, on the Maprega. Am I visible? No. Actually, uh, I have an issue with network. Mm -hmm. So now that Swati is audible, people can interact, still interact with her, she would be able to respond to the discussion. And the particularly yes, the student participants, we should be able to clarify now. She has very beautifully illustrated how she could use Persepela larva for experiments. Um, what I understand is enabled to save audio just what is that now? What was This is a very inspiration, yes, inspirational procedure I and mean, proceedings. So, the, 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 the kind of, uh, I mean, you're all, we all look at Professor Perla as the thing very theoretical. Uh, we have not had opportunities, many of us have not had opportunities to look at how Professor Perla could be used as an alternative model in a lab, a lab setting. So here, Parvis, Mitsuhail, and uh, Swati have uh, put a throat to show you how they really handle a dose of pena in the context of uh, an induced disease and try to find, make analysis of the outcome uh, through molecular expression. So it is really very brilliant. Uh, more, of course, more serious, more accurate, more focused assay methods, uh, which, of course, you can always otherwise learn. What is important is always is to start the vehicle and put it at the first gear. And once it is done, the rest is taken care of. You 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 develop motivation uh, to to learn more about the tool, more about the techniques, more about the model. But now you have made a you have put this vehicle to the first gear. That, that's what Suhail and Swati have done. Uh, the, 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 the vehicle is started now. So it is easy for us now to look at search for literature, establish contact with specialists, uh, and start using this as a model in your research. Okay. Somebody was telling me yesterday, Drosophila is not approved by the regulators for drug uh, screening or for toxicity testing. I do agree on that. But more importantly, learning is when you start using start using Drosophila as a model, C. elegans as a model, zebra fish as a model in your research. You start understanding the theory behind it, the logistics behind it, uh, the techniques behind it. That is how you get motivated. And then, of course, there is no end to learning and developing the skill, right? So that is what has happened in today's uh, program. I'm so impressed by uh, Suhail's and Swati's uh, explanation. But this is not winding up session, but I'm just motivating the participants to clarify uh, issues or points or uh, whatever they want to discuss with Swati. Now, I think Srijit, as we did last time, we should bring all participants to one screen. Yes, sir. And let them uh, let them show, open their video. 
so you can take a photograph screenshot right yes sir and that is important that would be at the end of it but now question session hello ma'am yes uh, somebody is asking you introduce yourself yeah Three, hello ma'am right. uh, i am ritu verma uh, i am from ggv bilaspur uh, i have a question ma'am uh, when i'm using the hyper diet uh, the uh, flies get sticky with the wires and with the uh, food itself uh, is there any solution that uh, it it won't stick or i may reduce the stickiness of my food or the wires which i use because i use it to wipe with tissue paper but still it uh, gets sticky after uh, 24 hours Hello. So I think it's not audible. It's a problem. I mean, there are networking issues. Okay, sir. Is it audible? Now we can hear you. Yes, yes, we can see you even. If we use the sticky media, if we use the sticky media, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Audible. Yes. हेलो रोहित Uh, usually, agar agar is 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 a product which can solidify. When you prepare the agar plate in agar medium, the agar solidifies and therefore the the fly need not stick; it, it can just walk around on the agar plate. Yes, That's what uh, Swati has said earlier. But so yes, I want to say that. Let me finish. There is some problem in the preparation of the agar plate. Um, Maybe temperature, maybe the the the, the medium in which agar is prepared for the agar to get solidified. Uh, you should try a method where the agar becomes solid, and therefore when the fly, the larva walks around, crawls around, it doesn't get sticky. Am I right, Swati? Yes, sir. Sir, we giving yeah. us uh, uh, cranberry juice. Other media, other media we also we use. Models, models just telling you about the diabetic model. We use yeah. uh, uh, making the uh, egg laying stage of agar. Just yes, for to visualize how the eggs are uh, cheaply separated on the medium. So we just uh, mixing the uh, cranberry juice in the agar and uh, egg, uh, the five laid their egg. And we, if we collecting, if we only want to collect egg on the plate, so we use this kind of video containing juice. Ma'am, ma'am, if we, yes. uh, what are the alternatives for lean protein uh, other than albumin? We can use because albumin won't last for more than twelve uh, hour or seventeen uh, hours. It uh, start getting very uh, smell very bad. Is there any other alternative we can use? We can use for lean protein. And I don't know. I have any idea of this protein. I can search for you. Um, twenty uh, four hour. I don't think it it will get. Uh, when when we using the toxic end, we only using twenty four hour feed. So it depends. So it depends how how, how many times uh, how uh, a time you expose the fly to the media. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Swati. If you can share your email address with the participants, maybe if they have any query, they can contact you directly. Sure, sir. I will share. 
Yes, thank you. Uh, well, this is this should be the time for uh, feedback session. Participants should uh, uh, be able to sh share their experience uh, with, us, with uh, Suhail, with uh, Swati. We should have the confidence that you have learned something. Hello. You are excited about the exposure. Please, very interrupting uh, the all the experiment, but I'm trying my best to explain everything on the live video session. Uh, and I hope everybody understand what I'm trying to tell. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes. 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 Sir. Yes. 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 I have a small question regarding uh, this particular experimentation. Uh, these things are there in MPharm syllabus also, MPharm pharmacology syllabus. Mm -hmm. uh, not as a practical, but at least theoretically, we have to teach the students what this drosophila is and how the experiments are performed on it. Uh, for this earlier, I had used one video uh, of Nobel laureate who has one Nobel Prize for his research on this drosophila, Thomas Morgan. Yeah. His video is there on YouTube also. And in that video, they have shown that they have, uh, he used just bananas as a culture medium. Yes, so, sir. Uh, is it really feasible to use bananas yes, as a culture medium for this Rosophila? Because even on video, uh, that is. Thomas good. Morgan. Actually, sir, Thomas yeah. Morgan, he is actually originated Drosophila as a model, as we all know. Right. He actually developed yeah. all the Drosophila biology, which are using in, in current time. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the uh, capturing of fly, uh, and uh, we use a uh, mushy dros uh, uh, banana, and uh, we just mash the banana at, in, the, in the culture bottles. And uh, the fly, we, which actually we already called him fruit fly, we, uh, we uh, attract to that uh, 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 banana. Uh, so, uh, sir, we are using these kind of techniques for catching the unwanted fly which are roaming around in our lab. So, uh, I am sure this is very hard for the, them to uh, study the fly with this mythic medium. That, but the media is very, uh, we are using it very advanced. And to some of the pupils using instant media, we just dissolving the uh, a solution in the water and the media is ready. We were we are uh, uh, waiting for 24 hours to transfer the fly. Uh, the, there are some uh, kind of videos you already uh, you can uh, watch on the YouTube. They are using a blue kind of media just dissolve in the water and the media is ready for the fly transfer. So they have a different kind of techniques and uh, if all the labs if using different kind of techniques. Right. Another thing is. Uh, recent Nobel Prize again uh, for this uh, biological clock. Even that yes, research was dependent upon that. this Drosophila only. Yes. Uh, there they tried to prove whether the activity of uh, fly after a particular genetic modulation uh, means changes the behavior of any uh, behavior of this fruit fly and all. So what appears is now uh, regarding C. elegans as well as Drosophila, the basic research was never targeted for any disease uh, disease related modeling. Okay, C. elegans yes, also sir. was used as a tool for studying genetics related principles in animals. Yes, sir. So most of the disease uh, are naturally caused in the uh, this kind of organism. We mm -hmm. only induce in genetically, like tumor formation and any cellular misfunction. We only induce by genetic because the, these organisms have high gene regenerative uh, cellular power. So they generally not uh, affected by any disease or virus. We only genetically induce. So this is how they, we control our disease modification and disease effect in the particular the particular stage or particular progeny. This is how this is the beauty of this model. So we can uh, we actually controlling the uh, amount of disease affected the organism. Right. 
mm -hmm. using the deficiency line or mutant line we were getting the uh, 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 severe kind of uh, effect of a particular uh, gene of the disease and uh, we having the rnai line uh, suppressing line over expressing line mm -hmm. these kind of things okay uh, see i would like to know if suppose i want to demonstrate to my students effect of say dizepam on locomotor activity of drosophila what will be the cost of this experiment and how what kind of difficulties will come if i want to demonstrate this to my students i am not i have not uh, used this model i have not studied this earlier but just out of curiosity if i want to set this experiment for my students uh, of first year for demonstration purpose what will be the cost what will be the problems and uh, what kind of instrumentation will be required for this particular simple experiment of locomotor activity and oh, effect of diazepam okay. On that, so we actually uh, you have all the setup of fly. So the fly can grow in the optimal temperature, and uh, you have to decide the doses and mix in the food. So uh, you you need to up a uh, standardized setup for uh, for this experiment. You just not use the uh, fly and the speed for the uh, for the little time period and for, perform the locomotion assay. So the doses are standardized. The exposure could, should be at standardized for the fly, and then you can use for the experiment demonstration. Yeah, true, but what will be the cost involved? Say the few cost. thousand rupees or few lakhs. What will be the cost involved in this kind uh, of? Doctor, uh, Patil, you need to have a stereo zoom microscope. Yes. Yeah, that and is. A, a, yeah, that and is, a yeah. bead incubator. Yeah. That's and right. if you can afford, you can go for a immunofluorescent microscope. Right. Is that already there in labs? Yes. Not connected to Drosophila or CL like in space research. For any any lab, these are all nowadays very routine like right, routine right, equipment right. like yeah. stereo zoom, uh, immunofluorescent or even even so, the, uh, the microscope uh, easily available. And right. uh, the beauty incubator already we use for the uh, right. bacterial right. culture yes. and the other. So you separately. Uh, the contamination part because the uh, drosophila media any so it can be separated with the other model so it, it, it cannot be contaminate the food media of the other model the culture culture room and all be separated from the drosophila lab okay okay thank you thank you the advantage of these models is that they are cost affordable that is why we we we, we beat around these these models exactly. even in, in vitro is expensive when compared to your C L against the drosophila and uh, zebra fish, right? Uh, yes, sir. So, so there are the expensive models and fish. It's a definitely cost of the Okay. Thank I think it's very thrilling to be conducting experiments on these models. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Thank you. I think, I think Srijit can have that. Yes, uh, I have a question. Sir, I have a transgenic model set up. What are the things actually we needed for in the lab? Transgenic model uh, development. So we, uh, for the uh, development of transgenic in the fly, we have to the facilities for making a plasmid or element uh, for the uh, desired gene and the micro injector to insert the dead plasmid in the um, uh, embryo of the fly. So we have the that kind of uh, setup of like micro injector and the sequencing studies. We have the particular sequence which we uh, use to insert the in the P element, and uh, we uh, that the element is uh, injected in the embryo, and uh, then we got the transgenic fly. So we have that kind of uh, setup, and the stand and the standard uh, uh, temperature and all the conditions. So can we develop a transgenic? And uh, the micro injector, how much it cost? Probably like. So we have the micro injector, but I don't know, uh, don't have any idea of the. Uh, we have the micro injector in the CSR IITR uh, Drosophila lab. Uh, we are used used to uh, micro inject the nanoparticles in the uh, in the Drosophila embryo. We uh, have the plasmid with the nanoparticles. They they are using the nanoparticle study on that. So I don't have any idea on the micro injector. Uh, could you know any model yeah. system actually? That would that micro manipulator would cost anywhere around fifteen to twenty lakhs. 
but that is the one which is yeah. used in in, in uh, IVF labs, fertilization uh, labs, where they are using transfer sperm to the home. They are using similar equipment to micro manipulator. Yes, sir. Maybe. Uh, could you? Uh... It's worth having one. It's worth having one if you can. Can nobody respond? I mean, these yes. days you have a lot of money with the funding agencies. The thing is, you have to give a good proposal, a, a tangible proposal that convince the uh, the reviewers that you are capable of uh, bringing about the result. Yes, so, uh, sir. Drosophila lab uh, uh, generally need the high end microscope, the can focal, the fluorescence. If you have, you have the uh, advanced kind of study on the Drosophila. And the good study can be conducted on the fluorescence on the by using the con, con focal and fluorescence microscope. So this is very needful for the Drosophila lab. Apart from the incubator and all. Without microscope, we now can't do the Drosophila. Yes, 